In this film we're going to be looking at how to create a Polaroid um, image uh, border and everything else uh, from scratch um, but basically just to kind of kick off with it we need to understand the kind of the the basics of what we're trying to do create once use lots of times so in other words we've created the effect once if I select the image um, area just to the right hand side I right click and I want to replace contents because it's a smart ob object go into uh, whatever I'm trying to change and then straight away I've got uh, an image that I can basically uh, move around okay so I've got my kind of effect that is kind of there whether I want the likes of the um, fog in edge effect it's really down to uh, your style as taste and things really we've also got a slightly soft edge as you can see here okay so uh, as far as the look and the feel is concerned whether you want to actually have a, a crystal sharp edge that's going to be down to you but we're going to be able to uh, replace this image time and time again so that it's kind of going to be able to uh, work in a, a real fast way for you uh, as far as the kind of layout designs especially I think with the Instagram trend and everything else and things really it really is good now as you might have seen at the beginning uh, basically the original pol Polaroid uh, was um, picture wise as far as sorry the uh, the overall size was 3.5 wide by 4.2 high that was the white a white area the image in the middle was 3.1 by 3.1 um, but because I want to be able to kind of print with this I don't want to kind of make it at the small size um, if I need it in small then basically I'll, I'll make it in full size and then actually just run an action to knock it back down in size so the Polaroid that we're gonna make is 14 inches wide by six sixteen point eight high uh, with a picture which is 12.4 by 12.4 now if you do the math you can see all I've done is times it by five and I'm also maximizing the total size of the image itself and things really okay so we need to start from scratch so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up into file new and this is going to be our Polaroid uh, picture uh, what is it uh, 14 by 16 I'm, I know it's 16.8 but I'm just going to put that in there for now okay so in this case I want to turn it into in inches and the width is going to be 14 and then the height is going to be 16.8 and then the uh, re resolution is going to be 300, 300 and I want it to be white if this was another color I just click on it choose the white press OK and I'm ready to go okay so there's my first kind of uh, image so now we're work working with approximately a 5,000 pic pixel high by around about 4,200 wide all right uh, next one I want to do is actually create the picture size so I'm just going to go into file new and this is going to be the Polaroid image okay so I don't really need to keep this or rename it whatever it is all I'm looking for is to create a kind of the size that I need so in this way it's going to be 12.4 as we said by 12.4 and of course I need to keep it all in the same resolution to get uh, together otherwise it doesn't matter what I do with it it's going to kind of uh, not mix so I have to have the resolution equal to the other one I just made and let's just make it a color for now okay so we've got pol Polaroid image at the top and Polaroid picture the first thing for us to do is kind of drag this on to the white so all all I did with the move tool selected was literally dragged it onto here if I wanted to send uh, to centralize it as I dropped it I could have actually pressed the shift key now you can see there's a pink guide come up and it's snapping to the guide as far as the said uh, the centralization so as soon as the image is in the middle you can do in its job if I wanted it bang smack in the middle in the vertical I just kind of bring it until I see the pink again and then basically we do the same as is though we need this offset towards the top so now we're just going to duplicate this layer and you, it'll show you why soon okay um, so this is the kind of the cutout as it were we're going to be using that soon uh, this one is going to be the blur edge um, we're going to have it 
and we're going to just duplicate this one cutout once more and it's only going to be whilst we're in the kind of the uh, production mode. Now what I'm going to do is basically create uh, a mask alongside here. Okay, so that's the one uh, the one thing that I need to begin with. So I'm just going to press um, the uh, control key while I press onto that one. And as you'll see now, I've got the crawling ants just coming around the actual edge of the box. If I now hit the actual mask, you can see basically what I've got. It's uh, just showing what is in the middle. Remember, white reveals, black hides. So technically, this mask is doing its job. And I want this mask because I'm going to actually copy it across to the other um, elements in a minute. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually create a white um, kind of ball, a border as such. So uh, once more, I'm just going to click on the control. Okay. So control in onto this one, crawl in ants again. This time I'm going to go to a selection and I'm going to inverse it. So now it's obviously the outside of the image that basically is inversed. Now what I'm going to do is create a new layer and just by clicking on to the create new layer and now what I want to do is actually fill the actual selection with the actual white yes so again um, all I'm doing is control and backspace to actually do uh, do the fill so theoretically this background layer is not needed at all now because this overlay on the top here is basically doing its job Right, I want to blur this edge here as I said to you, okay, so this image, the first thing I want to do is go to filter and blur and I want to add a Gaussian blur, just a little one, just to the edges, just to kind of uh, allow it to kind of come out onto the side and things really. So then I'm just pressing OK. Right, now um, I've got an option to kind of have a blurred image, uh, kind of a, a, an image that is nice and sharp with this selection underneath. So the first things first I need to do now is basically um, select onto the cutout layer, right click it and convert it to a smart ob object. Okay, then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this um, top layer as well. Okay, so convert it to a smart ob object. And the reason I didn't uh, kind of create a smart object first and then duplicate it was that um, it would have been quicker to actually when I'm swapping images to make the decision whether it's going to be a soft edge or not. But it's kind of more work when you're kind of uh, getting going if, if you don't quite understand how the kind of smart objects work and so on. In this case, as I made mentioned to you I want to add this now um, kind of uh, mask uh, across uh, the the one below okay so I'm just gonna again once more uh, just click it and then hold the alt key and then drag it down onto the bottom one and then this will actually not show the image that is uh, uh, below it so now I need to swap the actual red so at this case right click replace contents I can go and choose an image now uh, it's either going to be too big or too small or whatever it would be uh, but we need to replace that contents there and it's done its job let's just switch those two top off so you can see what actually we're doing all right so basically you can see what the overlay is doing if I switch off the mask by pressing the shift key uh, it's not really having any effect yet but if I'd had an image that was much bigger and basically the Polaroid was going outside the edges similar to a different one that we're going to be doing on another film okay um, but I need to actually make sure I've got the mask to actually control uh, control it so it just becomes have a habit yep now in the same way uh, what I'm going to have here is the blur ed edges and I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, replace cod uh, contents because remember it is a smart object already and now basically that image when I kind of put it on is there so you can see that it's kind of um, above the image yes obviously I'm creating a square it's a rectangle but really what I want is basically this kind of red square okay and that's what the mask is doing for me so now because I don't need this red square I can just move this mask up to here I can switch the layer back on again and now you can see already that I've basically got the image that I can kind of move in and out and it's basically doing its job all right so if you want if you wanted to have a slight kind of um, edge to the image itself um, this is where we could basically 
using this cutout a minute before we delete uh, delete it we can just right click it again put it onto the um, image that we're seeing uh, below and I can do once more I can go into the effects and I can create a outer glow a drop shadow an inner glow an inner shad shadow or in this case we're going to do a stroke so want to keep to a gray light grayish stroke pressing OK um, it's just going to be quite small I'm just going to press OK with that and then I can control D and now if we kind of come in close the kind of the stroke is there anyway so if I want to add, add this into the top image of course I can basically just go in and now drag the effects up into the top by holding the um, uh, alt key at the same time with it and now you can see I've got that kind of gray so all I did to create the effect on both of these layers is to basically kind of uh, just uh, alt and then dragged it into the other one. So as you can see now, this layer is technically not need uh, not needed at all. And now um, once I've made I've made it, basically I can kind of repeat it time and time again. Obviously, if I want to add a little bit of text on top of the white, I would just go and grab a text box drag it I usually drag it across the whole width and then all I'm gonna go into is uh, awesome day uh, with Anna okay so at this point just uh, make it the size that I want to be on all my kind of uh, uh, images from now on and we're gonna just save this image remember I don't really need this cutout at all okay uh, because I can always get the actual inner size from inverse in a selection on this layer so to just solve a little bit of file size I can delete that layer and then pretty much I'm ready to go so I'll just go in file save as and we'll just do Polaroid 4 14 16 PSD we save it there press and save that would usually be saved into my templates full Full, uh, folder um, because now I basically want to actually be, a, uh, be able to just go in and actually hot swap images so if I like it on on the top with the slightly blurred edge I can if I want the blurred edge fully showing I can just switch off the actual mask and then it will basically show everything else around the image okay but I want that on so um, remember smart objects right right click replace contents DDD as he goes completely Photoshop blind uh, with it and we just go into uh, go and choose another image so now we just kind of go and move it up to make sure it fits and at this point just with this image if I want to add like a fog onto it or a light leak uh, just go in and actually move the light leak up then if that's what I want to do there we go press and OK and uh, again, once more, all all I've got to do is really make sure that it's uh, just being associated to this image and things really. So that's how we create a Polaroid, um, basic kind of classic as it were, from the beginning. Um, at any stage, of course, once we've done our image, we can just go in to replace the card. Uh, the contents and we pretty much uh, shoot you know the same kind of resolution the whole time so it just means I'm a hot swap if you ever download something like like this and you find that the image is the wrong size then don't worry resize it first using the control T and as long as this image is a smart ob object it will rem uh, remember the last time you uh, resized within the save of the the kind of the master document and things really and then basically the next time it knows your resolution